Hi! Back in October of 2019, we started to have discussions around here about what the next 10 or 12 years at Northside Service Company was going to be like. It's important when you're in business to have plans and having a long-term plan is very important. If you want to steer the company in the right direction, you need to look way off into the future, figure out where you want to be when you reach that point 10 years from now or so, and then implement intermediate and short-term plans to make sure that you end up there. And that's a really important thing to do if you're going to be successful in business. One of the things that became apparent to us right away as we were discussing the next 10 years was that those 10 years were not going to take place here in California. There's a lot of good reasons why. To counter what many people may be thinking right at this very moment, no, it's not because we don't like California. It's not because California is a difficult place to live. It's not because California is necessarily overly expensive to live in. While all of those things are basically true, and there is sort of an exodus of California to some small degree, it's not as much as people make it out to be, it really Really isn't. Right now I'm in my office and my office is two miles from my house and my house is a quarter of a mile from the house I grew up in and I've been running around this area for my entire life and we have gone and seen and done just about anything that you could possibly do in the western United States in a reasonable amount of time because when you work for yourself taking off a week or two weeks to go on some long vacation is really a difficult thing to do and we've never really been able to do that very successfully. When we started to think about where it would be that we could go that would be interesting for us and also work for, well for the business, we started to look around the United States for different types of areas. Now one of the things that you have to know is that in today's world, probably 95% of all of the work and all of the repairs that we do come from people outside the state of California. They come from customers all over the United States and predominantly they're in the eastern half of the United States, Midwest, East Coast, in that area more than they are out here. Since all of that equipment is shipped into us anyway, our type of business has evolved into the type of business that everything gets mailed in and we can do what we do almost anywhere. When we were looking around the United States for places to go, there were some places that we obviously didn't want to go. And I'm not knocking anybody that lives in these places, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to live in the frozen north of Minnesota or somewhere in the dry part of Idaho or in the steamy hot part of Arizona where it gets so hot during the summer that the asphalt gets squishy. It's not the kind of place I want to live. We're kind of spoiled out here in California because because we have really nice weather most of the time. Cindy did a really excellent job of looking around the United States trying to come up with places that might be reasonable to live and we have gone to other parts of the country on vacation and thing periodically so we have a little bit of a sense of what it was like and the place that she came up with that seemed very reasonable to us was Chattanooga, Tennessee. While that's a big change from living in California, we thought it seemed like a reasonable place to go so in February of 2020, we actually did take off for a long weekend. I think we were there for five days. And while we were in Chattanooga, we connected up with a really nice fellow named Doug, who's a real estate broker there. And he was very generous with his time and he drove us all over the greater Chattanooga area, showing us all the different areas and all the different neighborhoods and all the different locations and the different types of houses that they had. So we could get become familiar with what it was like to see if it was a place that we might like to go. The week after we came back, then the world turned upside down because of the pandemic and the virus and all of those kind of things. We didn't know what or how that was going to affect the business. Fortunately for us, we were able to weather the storm because we've weathered many storms over the decades that we've been in business. Also, one of the byproducts of all of that was since we were mostly locked down and we took the quarantine thing very seriously, it gave us a lot of time and it was easy to focus on our long-term plan of leaving California and moving ourselves and the business 
to the greater Chattanooga, Tennessee area. Our plans of what we were going to do when we got there had changed many, many, many times over the last nine months. We had different ideas of how we would set ourselves up there and what we would want to do, and, 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 and a lot of effort, a lot of thought, a lot of considerations, a lot of changes over those nine months trying to figure out the best thing to do. And then one Sunday morning, as we were sort of scanning through houses that were for sale in that area, we came up with another idea. And we found something that was really interesting. What we found was this. This is an older commercial building that's in the county. It's in Hamilton County, north of the city of Chattanooga. It's about 10 minutes north. It's in a more of a rural neighborhood and it was for sale. I've always wanted to own my own building. I really have. One of the things about when you're in business is you like to be as independent as you possibly can be and also since the first 24 years that I was in business, I had my Newtone store and Newtone showroom and my offices. And then we had our second store and offices there. And then because of the way the world went upside down in 2008 with the mortgage crisis and everything and with online sales and so forth, the need for a retail brick and mortar store to sell Newtone stuff kind of ended because everybody buys everything online nowadays, which is fine. And we participated in that and we're a big online seller for a long time also. But not having had a store or a showroom for the last five years or six years, you, once you've had one, you miss having something like that. Now, we're not going to have a showroom or a store again because those days have passed, but having your own facility is definitely the way to go. So on that Sunday morning when we found this, oh, let's do it this way. We found this. Oh, big green giant pointer now so I can point at things. We called Doug, our real estate guy, and we said, Doug, we found a property, we found a building that's for sale. Would you be able to go out and look at it for us and give us more information about it? And he said, sure, because he was a, he's a swell guy. We rely on Doug a lot while, during this whole process. So he actually went out there on a Sunday and he did a FaceTime with us and walked through the building and walked around the building and looked at the property that it sits on and said, it's not a bad building. It's kind of dilapidated. It needs a lot of work and so forth, but you know, it would be more than suitable probably for what you want to do if you renovate it some. And yeah, we could do that. So I said, cool, we said, cool. So let's go ahead and um, contact the real estate agent and let's see what we can do about this. By the end of Sunday, unfortunately, it was already under contract. Somebody else had looked at it first and made an offer on it. That offer was accepted and so forth. I had a feeling that that deal might fall apart. And a few weeks later, I was right. One of the problems with this building, which you can't see in any of the pictures that we have, is up here it has a flat pitched roof, which you cannot see in the picture really. The roof is dilapidated and falling apart and collapsing and it needs a new roof and a lot of renovation to make the building usable again. This particular building was built in 1955 and it is a concrete block building on a slab foundation. It's always been some sort of automotive related types of business. I don't know what the original business in it was in the 50s, but I know it was an automotive body shop for a long time. And then later on, it was a place that repaired trailers that you pull behind trucks and things like that. So it's always been sort of auto, an automotive related thing. It does have this blue structure right here, which we call the shed. That was added sometime probably in the 90s or early 2000s. I think it was as an office for this building. So they had more workroom inside or something like that. A few weeks later, it came back on the market again. Got a hold of Doug and we made an offer on it. And we started the long, long, long process of buying and basically abandoned property 2,500 miles away from where we live. Purchasing the building and purchasing the land that it was on was a long process. It took nearly three months to accomplish that because every time you turned around, there was something else that you had to look into. Since it's a commercial property and it was an automotive related use for the building, we had to have a phase one environmental report done to make sure that there wasn't some sort of horrible toxic soup 
floating around in the dirt underneath the building. Fortunately, there was not. And then there were a lot of other issues. There are, stru there are structural issues with the building. Most of the problems of structural issues with the building are related to the fact that the building has not been taken care of. I think it's been abandoned and or emptied, uh, not abandoned. It's been empty for probably the last six, seven, eight years. Hard to get a real read on that. And the roof has been failing uh, more and more over time. And as everyone knows, water kills buildings. There's a lot of problems with the joints in the concrete blocks on the back of the building here behind the trees that you can't see. There is actually the, the surface of the concrete block has eroded away from where the water runs off the roof and sheds down the back wall. Originally this building was this large section here, the tall part across the front and then down the side. So the building, the original building is basically 40 by 40 and then this part over here, which we call the annex, this was added sometime later on. It, it is not as, it's, it's about 30 feet deep and I forget what the width is. I think it's about 22 feet wide and of course the roof is lower. That was added sometime later on. I know at the end, so at some point this was used as like a paint booth because it's got air filtration equipment and stuff like that for painting cars. It's in really rough shape. These big roll-up doors don't open. It's got broken windows. It's got old-fashioned steel sash windows in it that are from the 50s. Inside, it's just a big empty void of a space. There, are, there is a little office area inside here, but the way it was constructed and everything, it needs a lot of work. During the course of buying the building with all the building inspections, we learned and I also expected that it's on a septic system. The septic system actually could not be fully located as to where it was on the property. And there is some belief that it actually is underneath the annex here and they poured a concrete floor over it at some point, which is a big no-no. So there was dealing with a septic guy and dealing with the county about what it takes to upgrade the system so it's usable again. The electrical in the building is a giant mess because everyone's hacked into it and changed it and modified it and added onto it over the year. So that all needs to go. There is no heat and there is no air conditioning at all. It's a big empty concrete box and I assume they use some kind of space heaters or something so they didn't freeze to death during the winter. And I guess during the summer you just swelter in the heat and the humidity. So that's not very good. So it may seem that this is a really poor choice but it actually isn't. During the course of buying the building and the property we were also working on what we would do with it, how we would renovate it, how we would modify it, how we can make it work for our business, because it is a decent sized space. It's in a really nice location. It's right on what they consider to be a main road, although it's in our, out here in California, we wouldn't consider it a main road at all, but it, it does have its fair uh, enough traffic that I guess it is, and so on and so on, and how we would do all of that. And some of the things that we learned quickly were that, renovating a building when you're 2,500 miles away and making plans for it is really a very difficult thing to do. It's hard to get people to call you back because you're not actually there and I think a lot of times they don't take you real seriously and also we hadn't actually purchased the the, the property and the building at that point we were in the process of doing it. You don't really own it yet so I'm not really going to talk to you seriously about getting things done and also Construction and everything in that area is very busy right now and getting guys to go out and look at things is difficult to do. Although we did find a few good guys. We found a good HVAC, an electrical contractor, and we found a good structural engineer. But at the end, just prior to buying the building, this would be back in probably December of last year. We actually did have a contractor go out and look at what it would take to replace the roof structure and the roof itself because it's not salvageable as it is. And since that part of the building was built in 1955 and it was built to 1955 standards, it doesn't really match up for today's world very well. And the cost, it turned out to replace the roof was excessive. It didn't seem at that point that that was the correct way to go. So then we began to look at what would we do if we were to tear the building down and 
build a new one. The idea of building a new building went along for a little while. I talked to some contractors about it. I talked to a couple different companies that makes prefab uh, steel buildings. Steel building is very popular in that part of the country and for this type of use. It became clear to me fairly early on that that was something that one, you can't do 2,500 miles away. You need to be there. So we decided that we would sort of put off our plans to start any renovations or any work before we actually got there. Other details about replacing the building came up and it became apparent to us that that may be too complicated for us to do on our own and we needed some help with that. So in January of this year, we hired an architect. The architect's been working on our ideas for use of the building since we hired him and it's gone through lots of different changes. And one of the things that came up was this building on this piece of property is what's in an agricultural area. It's zoned for agricultural use. Imagine that in 1955 when this building was built, the county and the zoning and the building codes, everything was a lot more loosey-goosey in those days. If we wanted to build a new building and tear this one down, we would have to have the property rezoned. And if you rezone the property, you have to bring all of the property and the new building and the amenities for the new building up to current zoning codes. The upshot of that was even carefully choosing what type of zoning we would get for the property we would have to do things like build a 12 parking space parking lot and things like that and that's not really what we want to do we don't need 12 parking spaces we're not building a medical office or a manufacturing facility where you're going to have a lot of employees there's only going to be two or three people there at any one time after a lot of working around the details we determined that building a new building was impractical because of the cost and because of the how it would sit on the property and all of the other hoops that you would have to jump through so our plan basically ended up going full circle and now we're back to the building's going to actually get renovated which in some respects is not a bad way to go because there is sort of a cool factor of keeping a really old building and bringing it back to life and also the advantage from zoning points of view are this building as it is on the property today even though it doesn't meet current zoning codes it is basically grandfathered in uh, the where, where it sits, the setback from the street, the setback from the other property lines in the back that you can't see, and the way it's constructed and all of those kind of things. The, there's land that goes this way, way over here. You can use it pretty much however you want to use it. You don't have to update it to current zoning codes because it's all grandfathered in. And like a lot of areas to renovate a building like this, you can actually do a whole ton of work on it and it's still considered a renovation. It's not considered a new building. So there's a lot of advantages, even though some of the costs will be expensive, by, but in comparison to building a giant 12 base parking lot, it's not that bad. One of the things that we found very interesting whenever we talked to anybody in this area, contractors, other businesses, anybody that we needed information or help from about this, for instance, when we actually bought the building, we the building was unsecured, as they say. It was unlocked. Main door right here didn't lock it. It didn't even have a lock on it. It was just unlocked for years. And it needed to be secured for insurance reasons. So we hired a local, we call a local locksmith that's in the area. He's like three, four miles away. And we told him the address and what the building, where the building was. And, he's, and everybody we talked to is like, oh yeah, I know that building. Everybody knows the building. It's been there forever. I'm sure it's been an eyesore forever. And, you know, there are people that live near in their homes on their property near this building. There's a, there's a gal that lives back here behind the trees. There's people across the street. There's people on the street over here. There's people all around this building. This is not really in a commercial area. It's in a more of a residential area. Rurally residential, but residential nevertheless. But everybody knows this building. We actually talked to someone who, oh yeah, I, that my 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 best friend's uncle used to have an auto body shop there so everybody knows the building which is kind of interesting it's a real eyesore right now part of our plan is we want to be those crazy Californians that go to Tennessee and buy a building and we're going to renovate it and improve it for our uses but also for the neighborhood, for the general area, for the people that live around here, so they don't have to keep looking at this anymore. They can look at something that's better. So this last week, I got we got our first packet from the architect, and we get to see the first 
conceptual design of what we could do with this building. And here we have it. This is the per first perspective design. This is not a final design. This does not have a lot of detail in it, but this gives us sort of a general overall idea of what we could do to modernize and alter the building and renovate it so it would be suitable for our use. So what we have here is, if you look here, this white part, this is the out, basically the outline of the original building. This would be the little roll-up door in the annex. And then this is actually where the second roll-up door would be. This is where the storefront office door was. And then this is the third roll-up door. He's transformed these openings into windows and an these are all aluminum storefront windows. And then the entrance door here with the windows around it. Down here on the side, again, the original concrete block wall with its two original window openings here. To make the building more useful, to give us more square footage, to make sure we have enough room for all our stuff and all the things that we need to do. It's necessary, we're gonna, the, the height of the building is gonna be raised up because it is going to be basically two floors inside. It's still technically considered a single story building, even though there's two floors inside. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but that's what he says. This upper part, this gray part here, this is all metal panel siding. And then there's these windows up here to let light in and then a big window here in the front i'll show you what that's about in the middle another window here on the back it still has its sloped pitched roof and i think it would be a steel roof but i'm not positive about that the way that this is going to be constructed is inside so the concrete block it's unreinforced concrete block and there's a question about whether or not there's actually any steel that ties it into the foundation or whether it's just basically sitting on the slab we're unsure about that at this point and while earthquakes are not an issue in tennessee very often they did have a little earthquake a couple weeks ago it was a 2.0 and as i understand it everyone freaked out but that's nothing for us californians the bigger concern there is its wind load when the wind blows against the buildings and you don't want it to blow the walls down although the walls have been up since 1955 so i think they're probably pretty much okay but you do have to deal with the roof issue and you want to make enough structural improvements so that the building is sound for decades to come so essentially what's going to happen at least this is the plan at the moment is that inside the concrete block wall inside the original shell there's going to be a steel frame that's constructed inside and i'll show you more about that in a second there'll be a steel basically skeleton that's inside the original walls it'll not only help support the walls but it also will support the roof and the other interior features of the building the original concrete block basically is a skin it's not really, it's not structural in that it's holding up the roof or anything like that. It's all about the steel. Over here on the back corner, and you'll see this in the next drawing, there is a, an outdoor, he called it a patio deck, because there is an elevation change here. The lot slopes down, so you have a pier here that holds up one of the steel supports, and then you have this deck off the back of this area. So you have a little bit of space outside. So let's move on to the next picture. And this is just a preliminary idea. This is where architects begin. He wants to make sure that we're fundamentally happy with this general idea. There's a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of detail in all of this and this I'm sure will evolve over time, but they don't wanna start adding details and working on all that kind of stuff if we go, oh no, we hate it now. We don't, we never really liked it. You, you gotta like it before they move on. So this is the drawing for the first floor plan again. And the building is the, the outline of the building is the same as the original building so it's 40 feet deep this part is 40 feet long and then you have what they now call the flex room not the annex this all is the original footprint here's the little patio a deck off the back and so what we have here is this is the main lobby door and we have a little lobby area here there are some stairs that go up to the second level this area here where we have an office we have a little kitchenette this is underneath a giant platform 
and then there's a bathroom, water heater. Our shipping area is here. One of the nice things I like about this building, which you couldn't see in the original picture, is back here on the southern wall, there is a commercial steel roll-up door. So you have access into the workshop if you wanted to when you get big deliveries or if you want to pull a car in there, which I don't know why we'd want to. But you have access through a big door, which is kind of nice. This is all open workshop area. So this area where it says workshop, this would be full height all the way up to the ceiling, which I'm not sure exactly how tall that is at the moment, but I'm pretty sure that it's about 22 feet or so. It's pretty high. So then we have the flex room here. So the flex room has its own set of doors so it can be closed off completely. Window on the front, two windows on the end, and another set of doors that go out to the patio or deck. This is a different plan. Initially, when we started talking about a new building, I sort of sketched up a floor plan of how I thought a building of this size would work for us and he took those general ideas and then changed them around because he felt it fit the design of the building better and here's our second floor plan here's the stairs again that are now come up from the first floor there's a little landing and up here to the area they call the loft the loft is above where the office and the little kitchenette is and then this is some sort of it's not a full height wall i don't think i think it's probably like a half wall kind of thing and then this is the workshop area so you're looking down into it here an office here this is on the second level where the big window on the front is and then the window on the side this i believe is intended to be my office which is upstairs i'm not sure why i have to talk to him today about this i'm not sure why my office is smaller than the storage room and we'll have to see if we can do something about that the storage is obviously storage here where the where the draw in the drawing where the perimeter walls are dark gray that's where the steel would be i'm not sure about this right here whether that's block or i am not clear but the details are lacking and then on the back so then on the back of the of the building way up high in the new steel portion there are windows here and windows here to get more light in it's an interesting design and I think it probably will work for us. One of our prime considerations is we need more storage space. We have maxed out where we are now and we don't have nearly enough room. There's a lot of things that I still want to do in the business projects and other services that we can offer people and we don't have the room for it now. So this will give us a lot more room. My suggestion on some of this is going to be this storage area is fine, although I think the office could be a little bigger, but I don't think this needs to be closed off from the loft area necessarily. I have to find out why it's drawn that way and what his ideas are. But the loft area here, basically, this is going to end up, this will end up being along the walls and then columns of shelving, like in a library. Uh, this is where all of our parts and intercoms and all of these other things that we need to have on hand for the work that we do, this will be basically where all of that will be located. So everything will be in one place. This will be the first time ever that we've actually had the office and the repair shop in the same building. It's always been two separate locations and well that's great in some respects especially for not being interrupted when you're fixing things. It makes it kind of difficult because sometimes you need some little bit or piece that you don't have at the shop and then you have to wait because it's at the office and then that stalls up the repair and that's all pain in the neck. So it'd be kind of nice to see. One of the things you can see here are in the drawing there's these little what look like capital I's. There's one here, 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 here. These represent the I-beams, steel I-beams that basically will hold up the building. Um, so they're inside and then there'll be other interconnecting pieces. Basically it's like a big erector set and it's built inside the existing walls and the steel up at the top and so forth. It seems to be an interesting plan. Again, not a lot of details. This is the I-beam back here that holds up the corner of the deck that's in the in the column in the ground. Not a lot of details yet, but just general, it's an overall concept of what we think or what he thinks the building could be like. And here we're back to our perspective view of the building overall. So the, the thing you might be thinking is, well, when's all this gonna happen? This is all happening right now. Today is Wednesday, March 10th. And if things go as planned and as we have them scheduled, we will be leaving here on Friday, March 
26th and it will take us about four days to get there everything from the shop and everything from that belongs to us it will be in transit at that point the reality is that moving everything that far takes time and we already have a temporary facility that we've rented or leased for use while the construction of the building begins and is underway it will take us probably two or three weeks to get everything moved and then set up so we're operational again and we have been notifying all of our customers through email and everybody that we talk to that we're not accepting any new units in for repair at this time only what we already have here and we're going to have everything completed and shipped back out before we go but i think after as many decades as we've been in business we can manage to hang in there for a few weeks while we get ourselves moved so that's our big project that's what we've been working on that's why there hasn't been a lot of videos lately because this all takes an enormous amount of time and and any amount of free time that we used to have has been dedicated to this entire project so that's what's up there'll be more about this once we get there it'll be more interesting I'm looking forward to oh one of the things that I didn't point out is for the original building and all like that we've never seen it not in real life we've only seen pictures and had reports from people and talked to people who are there uh, we haven't been there I haven't actually seen it we bought it just based on what we knew and the pictures and what people told us. So I'm looking forward to being there in just a few weeks. And there will be a lot of videos about what it is. Uh, there'll be a walkthrough video. And as the construction and the renovation and all of that takes place, there'll be a lot of videos about that. So I'm going to create a new playlist about this. If you're interested, you know, watch for the videos. And I'll be interested in people's comments. So that's what we're up to. That's what's going on. It's a lot of work. But I think in the long run, it will pay out and it will be worth it. So I hope you found this interesting and it answers some questions about why is he making any videos? Surprisingly enough, people contact me and say, how come you haven't made a video in a long time? What's, what's going on? So it's just, we're just busy. So that's it. That's the project. There won't be a lot of videos until we get there, but then there should be a whole bunch and we'll get back on schedule. So that's it. See you on the next video.